So then you're going to press the one key. And then after you press the one, hold it and adjust the highlights. Once you've done that, you want to make sure that <laughs> just kidding. No, you did not start in the middle of the video. Just a little joke. Anyways, today we're going to go over a couple of tips to help speed up your editing and culling process in Lightroom. So uh, let's actually get started with the video. Will Simpson here. Welcome back to the channel. It's always good to see you again. Uh, today we're going to go over a couple of Lightroom tricks that I use to help speed up my process, my workflow, if you will. Now, a couple of things I want to clear up really quick because you hear the terms culling and workflow all the time. So what are they? Well, culling is going through and selecting the good images apart from the bad images or the in focus images apart from the uh, blurry images. It's basically just selecting all of your, your good ones, your selects, if you will. And workflow is used to describe the start to finish the and all the steps in between. It's basically where you start a process, in this case, editing to the end result or the end product. So in this case, it would be from import all the way through to the final editing, the final edit, I guess. Okay, so here's a shoot that I did uh, a few weeks ago and this shoot turned out amazing. So the first thing we're gonna do is I took a total of 270 images. That's a lot of images. So what you wanna do is you wanna click on the first one once they're imported. And if you don't know how to import images, let me know. I can make a quick video on that. Just comment below and I can show you how, how I import and organize and all that good stuff. Uh, so you click on the first one and we can tell that this one is kind of blurry. So next one, uh, that one's not bad. So we're going to press one on the keyboard. What that's going to do is that's going to give it a star rating. If you look here, there's stars. And if you press one, you give it one star. Two, you give it two stars. Three, you give it three stars. Four, four stars. Five, five stars. Then if you click on the stars, you can sort by stars. So you can click on this little symbol here, which is the equal to or greater than. And if you click that, you can then change your setting. So I want to see all photos that are rating is greater than or equal to one star or rating is less than or equal to one star, two star, whatever, or is equal to one star. You see, you see how this goes. So I usually use is greater than or equal to because if I click one star, then I want to see all my ones, twos, threes, fours, fives. I don't want to see any of them without a star. So you go through and you press one, two, three. I just use one. I don't really, I use two if um, like I want to send some pre-images to the client before they're all done, but I'll do like only like three to five of those. That way they at least have something. But most of the times I just use a one star system. So I go through all of the images and I click one star. And once you've gone through all of your images and you've selected them all, go ahead and click the one star. And you'll notice that you have all of the images with one stars, one or two stars in this case. Now, if you find an image and you're like, Ooh, I didn't like that image. Well, you just select the image and press zero on the keyboard and that will clear all the stars. So that is the easiest way to go through, call through your images and get them all organized. So you're not dealing with hundreds of images. Now, in this case, I actually didn't want this photo. So I'm going to just press zero on the keyboard and clear that one out and it'll automatically remove it. But, I have already gone through this entire project. I've also, oh, I've already delivered it to the client and they absolutely loved it. So what I did was I went through and two starred for this video to do, to run through everything. So let's click the two stars and you notice now, since it's set to rating is greater than or equal to two stars or higher. So now all my one stars are gone. So here's all these images that I have not edited. These are all the raw formats. So the next way to speed up your editing process is to build a preset, build something that you like, that you'll use all the time, eat, whether it's a starting point. Well, presets are always a starting point, but whether it's a, you're pushing it a little farther or you're just doing the highlights. So in this case, let's do this. Let's do highlights down shadows up. Let's set our white and black points here. And if you don't know how to do that, I'm pressing and holding option key while moving the slider and then finding the black and white point. I'm gonna lower the clarity because these always look very good soft. Uh, let's go ahead and set the white balance by clicking this little eyedropper, finding some neutral colors, white, but it's not 100%, like I really don't like this. It's, I want it very orange and warm. So we're gonna raise this and then we're gonna raise the magenta. That looks much better. Yeah, there we go, okay, good. 
So there's just a basic edit. So here's the before, here's the after. Now that's where you want to start with all of your images. You can then go to develop, new preset, and save the preset, however you want to do it. This creates a preset that you can then apply to almost every image just to get to a starting editing, editing point. Now, just as a note, uh, I had this come up the other day with someone that I was helping and they wanted me to edit their photos. They, they didn't have the time to edit and, and whatever. Anyways, there, it is a very important thing when you are first starting to learn to go through and edit your own photos. Because not only are you learning the editing software, you're learning what sliders do, you're learning what this does and that does and how these affect each other. You're learning how the colors affect each other, how yellows affect oranges and reds, how greens affect blue, you know, so on and so forth. You're learning all of this but you're also editing your images, the ones that you took pictures of. If you're out in the field and you take a picture, let's say of a couple and they're kissing and you don't notice this trash can in the background, you could have moved to two inches to the left to avoid it, but now you have to edit it out. Well, by editing your own images, you start to notice these things. You start to see, okay, well, I, this positioning looks weird. Her arm is at a weird angle. There's this trash that I could have moved. You start seeing all of these things that you could do pre-capturing the image and save you a lot of editing time. So I always find it very, very valuable to edit your own images for quite some time, actually all the time, but at least for a good amount of time because you're honestly going to learn a lot about taking photos as well as editing by editing. So it's kind of a twofer and so, just, just as a quick note. Anyways, the next thing is once you have your preset created, so I'm gonna actually reset this because I have all of my presets here and most I created all of these and they're all available on my website. If you're interested, I'll put the link in the description, but I use all of these presets, the ones that I've created over several years for all of my edits, but there's always a tweak. There is never a one and done, ever. Every photo is different and every photo has a different style. So never think that a preset is one and done. So in this image, I want to go for a kind of a romantic, moody kind of uh, a golden hour kind of look. So I love this preset here because it's kind of gritty. It's kind it's got that gritty look, but it's also very, very perfect for this style. But you notice that it does have some work that it needs to do. For one, it needs to warm up. Good, so that's warm there. And then we're gonna come down here, we're gonna lower the clarity because again, I want it soft. So I'm going to just adjust a few of these settings. No, that's too much. A few of these settings until I get it to where I want. Again, presets are not a one and done. You have to edit for the photo. There we go, that's looking good. Okay, and as far as time's sake here, we're gonna call it done there but that's just the preset. Now I have the settings, but the magic comes from your, your local adjustments, your masking. So we're gonna click the mask and we're going to first, we're gonna add a linear gradient here to pull the sun perfect. Then we're gonna add a radial filter here and we're gonna press subtract and remove the subject so they don't get affected by this. We're gonna blow out the sun a little, make it really orange. There we go, good. Then we're gonna select the subject and we're going to actually brighten them up just a shade. Good, and then we're going to crop this to a Instagram four by five, even though Instagram hates pictures now. Bring Instagram back, hashtag. <laughs> Anyways, okay, good. So now once that's done, Again, for editing's sake, we're gonna call that done. There is more that I would do to this image to make them pop. In fact, let's just come down here and add a little vignette to really darken it. There we go, perfect. Good. Now, that is done. Now, if you have a ton of photos in the same sequence, the same lighting, the same style, and you're gonna use this style, Lightroom finally did it. They finally updated where you can sync your masks especially with these select subjects and select, select skies, you can sync your mask throughout the, the, all the images, which is the next tip for editing faster. So all of these images are basically the same and I want to have that same exact look with obvious minor tweaks, exposure tweaks, but I'm gonna go through that. However, before Lightroom updated this, when they came out with their new masking features, you couldn't do the select subjects and select skies automatically. Now you can. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna have this first image selected. We're gonna press it, we're gonna press and hold shift. We're gonna click all the way to the end 
come over here to sync. We're gonna make sure that masking is checked, make sure all of the, everything else that we want checked, and then we're gonna press synchronize. Now this takes a little bit. It's not actually that long, which is amazing, but once it's done, all of your images are synced through with all of your masks. Now you will have to go through and adjust the masks, but it's so much faster, oh my God. So let's go to the next photo here. Obviously way, way too orange. So what we're gonna do is first thing, we're gonna straighten the image because you see over here the horizon is tilted. Always check your horizons, unless it's a style. <laughs> good, once that's, press enter. Awesome, looks way better already. Then this is good, this is good, this is good. This is the radial filter. But what we want to do is we want to move it. Now, sometimes it's hard to find these things. There it is, okay. But if you can't find it, press Command or Control and the plus or minus sign, and then you can click the, the mask. Now you'll notice that I can't click on the mask. It's off the image. Even though I'm clicking the circle, I can't click the mask. Well, if you come to the image right here where it, it pops and then click, that's another update that Lightroom needs to fix because you should be able to select it wherever, not just on the image. Then once you have it selected, you then go back here, click the dot, and we'll move it to the image here, and then zoom in, and good to go. Then we're going to just adjust the white balance a little, and perfect. So now we have a perfect uh, white balance with that beautiful orange tone. Now let's say one of the images doesn't look good. Let's just go to this one here even though I know it looks awesome. <laughs> so let's say that this one is not great. There, well, obviously it's a little too orange, but let's just go ahead and fix that really quick. That's better. Perfect, okay, good. Now let's say that part of the mask of the select subject selects something that you don't want. For example, let's just say the back of her dress, we didn't want to be in the select subject. The select subject, that light, the, the feature is actually quite accurate, but it does sometimes select things that should not be selected. So let's zoom in here, right? And we want to, let's press O on the keyboard to see the mask. We want to deselect that. So we're going to press subtract, brush, make sure auto mask is selected, and we're just gonna subtract this. And there we go. So that allows you to customize the mask select for, notice how good that auto mask is. Whew, that is so good. Okay, good. That allows you to customize the mask so that you get it perfectly. Now, here's one thing about the syncing. Let's then take this image and select the next image and we wanna sync these two. So we press sync, have all the masks checked and press synchronize. If there are already masks there, you have two options, merge and replace. Merge puts them all together so you have all the masks and replace, replace the current mask with the current, with the syncing that you're doing. I always just do replace because usually I want to take every, everything away. So I'll press replace. Now remember, this is going to sync the masks exactly, including that subtraction. So let's go to this image and you'll notice you'll notice that if we click on the mask, we select the one with the select subject, that this negative subtraction is there. Now you can't really see it as much in this image, but sometimes if you're like brushing here and there, it, you'll, it'll be really noticeable. So when you do sync these things, make sure that the minor adjustments per photo you're removing. So you just click on this one and you just delete it and then you're good to go. Then you have that full selection. Ugh. Gotta crop these things, it drives me nuts. Anyways, that is the, the update on the mask, which makes syncing photos so much faster and so much easier, absolutely love it. Now, once you've gone through all of your images, you've made your minor tweaks, you, you're, you're happy with everything and you're ready to export, uh, what you're gonna do is you're gonna press select one of them and then you can press Control or Command A, which is select all, or you can press one of them, press Shift, and select the last one and it selects all of them. Right click on them, go to export, export, and export your images as you need. Uh, again, if you need more information on exporting, let me know in the comments and I can do that. This is not that video, but this allows you to export all of your images all at once, it saves a ton of time. It takes a little bit, so go have some coffee, go take a shower, go for a walk, go 
knit a sweater, I don't know. <laughs> but uh, those are the tips that I use on every single edit. Literally every single client that I work with or take photos of, it, this is how I go through my process and I hope this helps speed you up. Just remember, go through every image still because once you're all done, then you want to, once you've done all of your edits, go through each image. And once you've exported all your images, go through them again. Go through the actual JPEG file and just look at them. Look at them, after, go, out, go away for like an hour, come back and look at them again because fresh eyes, you, you might notice things here and there and it will make a difference. You'll spot things that you didn't notice during your first edit that you can fix and makes a big difference. So with that, uh, we have wrapped up this video. I hope this all helps. Uh, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. I'm trying to get to 10,000 this year and it would be greatly helpful to have you along. And if you have any questions, you know where the comment section is. All of my presets are available on my website. I'll link that in the description. And uh, yeah, guys, I'll see you next week.